I'm here at a special conference for Solar Cell Research um, in Ventura, California, and we are going to talk with Nate Lewis and hear about what he is and his group is doing to try and build a better solar cell. So the idea is that we really want to utilize the biggest energy resource we have, and that's the sun. But to do that, you have to capture it, convert its energy, and store it, because humans need energy all the time, and we need it both in the daytime and in the nighttime, in the summer and the winter. We have to find a way to capture, convert, and store sunlight. We can capture and convert it right now with solar cells, but they're very expensive and they don't solve the storage problem. So if one can build an integrated system that does all three things just the way nature did in a plant, then we have a solution to an energy system from the sun. Our issue, what we're doing in the CCI, has to do with the capture and conversion part. Solar cells work great, but they're very expensive and they're not coupled to storage. The idea is that instead of making an expensive solar cell, having to absorb a lot of sunlight deeply in the material and purify it so that the excited states can go all the way back up where they came from in light to make electricity, that instead we'll use a photon forest, a whole bunch of very narrow, long diameter rods, like aspen trees. And they'll still be long enough to absorb all the light, but the electrons will only have to move a short distance sideways before they make fuel in the liquid. If we can do that, then we can use really cheap material. The electrons won't have to go very far, because they only have to go a short distance sideways instead of all the way back from the roots of the tree, if you will, back to the top. And so we're exploring how one grows these highly oriented forests of photon semiconductor absorbers and uses the right materials to directly make and break chemical bonds to make fuel. We'd like to split water to make oxygen that we get rid of and hydrogen, that would be a fuel. If we were really great, we would in situ, not make hydrogen gas, but use that with carbon dioxide from the air, and we would make a liquid fuel like gasoline or methanol. Plants essentially do that. It's just they make lignocellulose. It's a fuel we can't use. So our job is, as chemists, to make a new system to make a fuel we can use from the sun to both capture, cheaply convert it, and store it. So I was interested in science because I think like a lot of, of people in high school, I was pretty good in math and physics and my textbook courses and much more, much more interested in that than in history, for instance, which was okay, but I didn't see the excitement in that for me. And then I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought maybe it would be neat to build bridges or be an architect, and those would have been great things. But like many people, I had a really inspiring teacher, and that turned me on to science, a discipline, actually, chemistry. In addition, didn't hurt that I was getting awful grades in physics and math and taking chemistry at the same time and I was doing very well. And, and the third thing that happened is I got into lab. And when you get into lab early and you, you feel the joy of discovery, of holding that new compound in the ear, the only one in the world that's ever had, of making something that takes sunlight and make hydrogen gas. It was an accident, but we did it and we had a discovery. And the excitement of doing that and being involved in it, that combination of combination of forces, of having the inspirational person guide you that way, and then the chance to get in and do it yourself, uh, that was the lock for me. My favorite part of being a scientist is that it's not one thing. It's teaching 
my class one day to 200 freshmen for 20 years and getting them inspired and understanding science. And that same day, going in the lab with my graduate students and watching these pieces of the puzzle evolve and turning on the knobs and dials of a new piece of equipment that'll let us make measurements that no one's ever made before. Because chemists fundamentally make new things. We actually don't just study the properties of the physical world, that's what physics does. We don't study how living systems change in their behavior with their DNA. That's what biologists do. Chemists make a thing that has never been that thing before in terms of a material. We make fundamentally new things. And to hold in your hand a bottle where you're the first person in the world to ever make that and then explore its properties, that's a great thing to be able to say and think about. And that's really exciting. And so everything revolves around the ability to make a new thing to make a better function, to store energy, to cure disease, to do these exciting things in science. And that, that's what's a great part of my life.